This is recording to the cloud. This is week 11, R795, dissertation proposal preparation, uh, spring of 2024. This week we have two guest speakers, one at one o'clock, one at two o'clock. Charan Wong will be the first guest speaker. And you saw uh, the info that I sent you on Charan. She's at Colby College in the writing program, a multimedia writing specialist, an assistant professor of writing, and someone who's working on two books in AI in education, as well as about three or four manuscripts with me and other people related to AI and ethics and other kinds of things. Uh, her interests include second language writing, technology enhanced language learning, teacher professional development. She's got articles in several journals that are about to come out, which is great news. Um, her work's been supported by uh, Open Education Research Foundation, our fellowship grant, and the DDG grant by International Research Foundation for English Language Education. So she'll be presenting first of the two presenters from um, one until two, uh, 10 tips on presenting your dissertation, as well as uh, defending your dissertation as well as communicating your, with your advisor and others, as well as collecting data. So there's many topics you're on. Um, and so I wanna make sure we get to, to all of them. So I better be quiet here in a second, just say it's been a delight working with her both when she was here at IU in, and she ran the Makerspace here at IU. So she knows a bit about Makerspaces. She got her degree in LCLE, Language and Culture and Literacy Education and um, a master's, I think, right? Did you get a master's along the way in IST? Uh, I don't have a master's degree, actually. <laughs> close, close, close to having. She got a, a, a minor in IST, maybe. You right. Remember. So, um, but she took many IST courses. It almost was an honorary member of the IST department because she spent most of her time on this wing, at least when I saw her. Her dissertation explored issues of um, language learning in uh, rural parts of central and western China where a um, expat teacher would come in from uh, another part of the world, whether it's in another country or in eastern parts of China, to teach English via synchronous technologies. And if you've got my book, um, Transformative Teaching Around the World, she has one of the chapters in the book related to that. Uh, it's one of the most fascinating chapters and it's really important that um, she had a, a, a role in that particular book. So I thank Tron for that. Um, again, I'm gonna try and find tech support. So we may take a break in the middle to try and set up the room. I may come back sure. in the room, but thank you to everyone for your patience. But this is the only way I could get it, this to work without feedback in the room. So Tron, you wanna take over at this point and I will mute my mic and take my video off so you won't see me running around the building trying to find a tech support person. Thank you, Tron. Sure. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, and uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, so you guys have made the right decision. If I can to, uh, could do my PhD again, I, I'm going to do ma major in IST. <laughs> so um, I'm going to talk about, uh, let me sh share my slides here. Um, okay. Uh, can you all see my uh, PowerPoint slide screen? Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, tips on defending a dissertation and collecting and communicating data. Uh, so I did my uh, dissertation defense in December 2020, which is right in the middle of the COVID. So uh, basically my defense is all online in Zoom. Uh, so, which probably is a little bit different uh, in your case, uh, for from your case, but um, I think most of the things are similar. Uh, so, as Dr. Bong have already uh, mentioned, um, my dissertation is about synchronous hybrid English learning for children in rural China, and I did a hybrid uh, ethnographic study. So, uh, in terms of presenting and uh, defending the topic, uh, the, the the defense. So um, 
I would say a very important thing is to read your dissertation before the defense. Uh, basically, I spend the previous day before the defense, just spend the time reading it because you, you wrote uh, like two, 300 pages. And uh, of course, you cannot remember all the details there. Uh, so after you finish writing it. So I think it's important that you go back to uh, your dissertation because sometimes when the committee asks you questions, uh, uh, sometimes they don't. They also don't uh, remember all the details. But you, when you are answering, you you don't have time. You know you cannot really uh, go back to uh, the specific pages. But uh, you want to know um, as much as possible in order uh, to provide more details uh, from your study. Uh, and I would recommend practice your presentation multiple times and at least do one mock defense. Uh, so I remember I did this with my uh, advisor online because uh, it was during COVID. So she, uh, she, I did actually I did twice with her. I remember. So the first time she uh, uh, walk, uh, I walk uh, through the my slides with her, and uh, from the beginning to the end, and she gave me a lot of advice because um, it's very easy that uh, likely that you over prepare, which means you have too many slides and that you cannot. Um, go over, uh, finish that within the given time. So uh, it depends on how your advisor set up the defense. Sometimes they give you 20 minutes to present uh, your uh, presentation. Sometimes it's uh, longer. Uh, so I think my advisor says 20 to 25 minutes. So um, I have a lot of slides and she um, gave me a lot of suggestions uh, uh, in terms of making it more condensed. And then uh, she also gave me some suggestions on the presentation de design and also the de delivery. So that this is um, important uh, uh, to do during the mock defense in terms of time and fluency and anticipate uh, some questions. And that's the hardest part of a dissertation defense. And uh, I think it's important also to wear something you feel comfortable with in which you feel like yourself course, because I did on Zoom, uh, I was wearing a blazer, uh, but uh, uh, my pants, okay, <laughs> is not that formal. Uh, but uh, I think so, I see people wearing a uh, very formal versus uh, also a little bit casual. It, it's, uh, it depends on how you, you, you feel more, more comfortable, but I think going a little formal uh, is fine. But if you feel don't com don't feel comfortable wearing uh, you know, being too formal, I think it's, uh, uh, you might feel very nervous uh, during the defense. And, I, I will uh, interrupt you, Charan. <laughs> be very formal. Oh, be okay. very formal. <laughs> Just <laughs> as formal as you can be. Impress people. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, so uh, I feel like attending other people's defense is very important. And uh, I learned so much from this experience because sometimes uh, uh, I remember I have some committee members and um, because one committee member is more specialized in professional development. So uh, I remember when whenever I attending her, uh, the defenses that she was in, I hear a lot that she asked people uh, questions about professional development. So that uh, I kept that in mind and I prepared beforehand in terms of some of the, the questions she might be asking. Just an example uh, you, for you to, to um, maybe understand your uh, dissertation committee members, their, uh, the questions you, they might ask and the interests uh, and the, the style uh, they, uh, uh, in terms of the, the, the questions they would like to, to ask during the defense. And uh, uh, this is related to this point as well, research your committee members, because uh, as I mentioned, they, they have a different interest. Um, so possible questions, um, of course, because your dissertation has these different sections. So questions might come from all of these sections. Uh, I feel like uh, the, the reason I highlight, or I make methods part read is because I, I, I know this part is going to, uh, when, when, when I was being asked, um, I want to provide a lot of justifications why I choose to uh, 
observe my class in this way and how long I, so for instance, mine is an ethnographic study, but I only do uh, the, the data included in my dissertation is only one semester. So I, I would have to justify oh, why I did the first part online and the second part uh, on site and why I excluded certain observations because I intervene too much. So things like that, uh, because I think uh, methods uh, can be, uh, uh, one of the sections that people will ask uh, and the analysis findings discussions and implications uh, because we are um, uh, we're in I think uh, for for the classmates of this class uh, do we have PhD both PhD and the EDD students here Dr. Bonk So uh, I think if you, maybe he's not here. So if you're in PhD program, I think uh, your implications, of course, it has to be theoretical and practical as well. Because sometimes when, um, I remember I attended one dissertation and a committee member questioned the, uh, the student and saying your implications are like only practical, but not much theoretical. I think that's more, um, suitable for EDD uh, students, I assume, but because I am not in an EDD program, so I'm not quite sure about the expectations, but the the reason that committee member questioned the, the candidate is because uh, she, uh, she felt that the, the, the paper, the dissertation wasn't um, theoretically uh, important enough. So uh, type of questions. Uh, I I think there are different types. Uh, if you uh, uh, have been to uh, defense, and you can basically see and analyze how the committee members ask the questions. For instance, uh, if explanations and clarifications, uh, they might ask, "Oh, on page X Y Z, uh, you wrote this, and can you explain more?" Uh, so these ones I think are easy to easier to uh, answer because uh, they. They offer, uh, you already know them, and you just need to offer some explanations. And for uh, reflections on the past, so I was asked this question. I, I couldn't remember which committee member, but uh, one of them asked, if you were to do it again, what would you do differently? Uh, and also your future plans. Uh, I think Dr. Bong asked me this question. What publications do you plan to work on based on this dissertation? I find this question really helpful because it helps helps me to think about um, uh, in the future, uh, how can I make this dissertation into different uh, small papers and publish them? And uh, uh, when you are reread your, uh, rereading your Hi. dissertation. Are you a yeah. person? Yes, but I might not be able to help. And I think um, uh, so. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Bank uh, also gives me some uh, suggestions in, in terms of that. So this is a very helpful question. Uh, so the real defense question, I feel like this part is the most challenging part because uh, this is the part uh, you're going to defend. And they will ask you, oh, what you have omitted and important things you should have uh, addressed, but you haven't. So. Um, if you run into this question, I think, uh, of course, you would need to give some reasons, for instance, why you have uh, omitted something, uh, or uh, but you, you also wanted to acknowledge um, the, the dissertation committee members uh, uh, or the value of this question, and, and you think this is an important question, and then you start to um, kind of defend yourself a little bit, and then also think about ways you can improve uh, your work. Uh, so during the defense, um, put yourself in a good mood and think before you respond. Um, I, I think different people might, um, depending on your uh, personal uh, style, you might respond differently. But for me, um, I think it would be helpful uh, when I, if I am I'm not sure how to address a question, I pause there for just a few seconds. And then I I start to talk, but some people for them the the answers uh, are coming as long uh, along the way as they are talking. So uh, if you really need to like think for for just a, a short like a brief time, I think uh, 
you you can ask for that and accept your nervousness do not be too nervous um how many different failure stories have you heard i do hear some of them but uh, most most of them are successful stories uh, so you think uh, you have to think positively i will be on the positive side i will be one of the successful stories and ask clarification questions when the question is unclear to you so don't be afraid to ask uh, just uh, uh, wh whenever if you are uh, not sure whether you understand the question uh, clearly, uh, ask them to uh, rephrase that. And thank committee members for their great questions and then uh, follow up with your structured responses. Uh, recognize the adults' questions, concerns, and suggestions, and then tell them how you have addressed them or how you will, how you will address them. And don't take critical comments personal. I think um, the, the first day after my defense, the first night, uh, my head was just filled with all those comments. And uh, I think my, my, my defense went pretty well, but uh, it's like the course evaluations, you know, when you, if you see a lot of uh, comments, students uh, saying, oh, your course is fascinating. I learned a lot from it. But most of the comments were good, but there might be just one or two comments, uh, you know, one or two students who are not happy with you, with your course, and you, you're going to care about only those too so much i think i'm kind of thinking that way the night during the defense there are a lot of good uh, things uh but i i kept thinking about those one or two most critical ones and uh uh i think it's 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 common it's normal but don't take those uh critical comments that are personal uh so uh tips on collecting data and communicating with the community Ron, can you hear me oh yes i can hear you yeah, so we're going to have feedback for just a second. Um, okay. After you present, we're going to have a tech person come in the room and fix this. Well, I don't think she she knows all the steps, so she's going to try. At, so I've asked her to come back at 1.45. So if you could actually, I'm going to speed you up, try and finish by about 1.45 or 1.50. Um, 45, yeah. Or 1.50. So uh, then we have 10 minutes to try and fix this in between you and Merve. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. Oh, but no I problem. Find somebody. Um, yeah. Okay. okay, I hate to interrupt, and she's right. I always ask uh, what you plan to publish from your dissertation. <laughs> you can expect that as a question from me. <laughs> Go ahead, Sharon. Sure. Uh, so that's basically my uh, defense uh, tips. Uh, and in terms of uh, collecting data and communicating with the committee, um, I also have some uh, things to share. So in terms of data collection, uh, get your e equipment ready. I remember the first class observation, um, there's something wrong with my uh, camera. So I, I immediately uh, bought another camera. So I ended up having, although I originally I planned to have uh, one camera, but I ended up having three in total. So um, one of the reason is that, uh, as I mentioned, the camera um, had some problem during my first class observation, but then I got, got another one and the camera was fixed. So I put um, two, uh, one in front of the class, the other in the back of the classroom. And because the classroom also has a built-in webcam, so I also used that one. So I got three in total, which is very helpful for me to um, also to see different um, pieces and uh, also uh, cross-check the data and uh, actually that ended up uh, helping me to so i'm currently working on a, a paper on uh, post-digital ethnography so a new uh, ethnography uh, approach um, uh, that i proposed based on my dissertation topic so one of the things i mentioned in my um, uh, this new methodology is that uh, I I recommend uh, researchers to have uh, uh, multiple um, equipments. So uh, it, it kind of uh, just because I've had that issue and then it made me to think how different, uh, how you collect data can influence how you uh, see and how you experience uh, the space and how you later on analyze your data. So uh, uh, get your equip equipment ready and also test it uh, and also think about how uh, different equipments can influence uh, your data collection in different ways. 
and don't re uh, resist from learning new things. Uh, I found this out also because, uh, as I mentioned, I firstly did the online observations. And then when I go to the rural school, I realized there are so many things that are different. Uh, and also things that, that I couldn't see from just uh, an online observation. And I, I noted all of them. Uh, and I, so every day I read a lot of, lot of notes. And then later on, those small things in, uh, that I learned from daily conversations with my participants all become that very important data that helped me to uh, better understand uh, the classroom interactions and why the hybrid learning was uh, um, kind of uh, situated in the school context and used in, in certain ways. And clar uh, collect various formats and copies of data, uh, present various and especially multimodal formats of data for different audiences and different communication purposes, especially if you want to uh, make also a larger impact, not just to the research community, but also uh, a larger community or uh, on the more practical side, I think, uh, it would be great if you have uh, different kinds of data for you to uh, communicate your research uh, outcomes uh, for different audiences, for instance, writing, presentation, or other creative means of uh, disseminating your work, like even making a like a YouTube video or uh, sharing it as a, uh, some of your uh, design into a, a OER resource. Um, and organize and store your data well. Uh, at least two copies, uh, at least, I think. <laughs> so, at least, uh, at least, yeah. at least. Yeah, and find a system to name your files because for uh, such a large project, um, naming your files uh, smartly will save you tons of time. I am not uh, very smart in terms of uh, uh, developing a system, uh, but I know some people are very organized. I think Dr. Bonk is very... Um, uh, good in terms of uh, developing, organizing your files uh, yeah, on your computer. So uh, for instance, uh, the type, I think for, for a file name, uh, you can uh, specify the type of the, the data, like interview and the number and the name and the uh, date. So these are the very basic uh, information, but uh, you might be more creative and uh, provide more uh, information depending on for what would be best for your uh, purposes. And also keep your goals, that is uh, your research questions in mind. Um, I think because uh, sometimes we might, um, because there's so much out there and it is a long time of uh, data collection, uh, Sometimes we might feel tired during the middle of the things uh, because we might be a little lost and feel, oh, there's too much out there. But always keep your uh, research questions in mind so that you, you don't get lost and you feel uh, you're still on track. And always it's a good idea to collect more data than less data. So uh, I, I think uh, this is important. And also later on, uh, maybe you want to publish, uh, publish a lot and uh, uh, you can use a different data uh, and take take notes on interesting or significant data while collecting them. Uh, don't procrastinate. Uh, so uh, I mentioned I, I wrote, wrote a lot of uh, notes during my uh, daily interactions with my participants because it was an ethnographic study. But sometimes I'm just very tired. And when I go back to my hotel, uh, so uh, I stayed in a hotel in the county, and every day I took a one-hour uh, ride to the school in the in the mountain, and uh, there's also a long walk, and so I went there every day. Uh, wake up five, six, and then go start go there seven, and arriving on, at school at eight, and then coming from the school at five p.m. and then uh, come back and organizing these things. But sometimes I was too tired. So I don't have time to write. Uh, I just use the recording and just talk uh, and uh, talk those things and the recording will keep everything. So uh, if you, you if you were tired, you can think about other uh, ways, creative ways of uh, documenting uh, your thoughts, uh, so your Tron, memories. Do yeah. you have a picture of the school that you're in uh, handy on your um, computer? I think so. I can find that out later. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so rapper building, uh, this one was a little hard for me. As I mentioned, I um, worked with a rural school and uh, they are really uh, in shortage of teacher resources. So they asked me to, uh, because they have English online teachers from grade three, uh, sorry, a grade fifth, a fifth grade and sixth, sixth grade, but they don't have the uh, uh, English uh, class, uh, teachers for fourth grade and they wanted me to teach the fourth grade. So I ended up uh, agreeing to teach um, during the second, uh, during the, uh, the second half of my stay in there. But that was a lot of work. Uh, and uh, sometimes I feel I cannot handle uh, well and have a good balance between my data collection and also uh, voluntarily teaching for them. Uh, but I feel that's important for the school and they, uh, it's a, uh, it's not easy for them to be able to find a teacher who is willing to teach there on site uh, to their students. So I agree to do that. Uh, but then there's also some ethical concerns because when you have, uh, when you know them uh, very well and some of the data that, um, you know, uh, especially when you do, I think uh, when you do the member check with your participants, it's, it's very important to do member check because uh, some of the data might, when you uh, make it um, published, um, it it might make your population, your um, participants um, vulnerable. So I I double check with them, and uh, in order to uh, avoid the, these kind of ethical concerns, and talk to your advisor if running into challenging situations. So this is important too. So don't uh, think of data collection as just you. Uh, uh, collecting data alone. And if you run into any questions uh, or challenges, uh, talk to your advisor. And communicating with the committee. So ask your advisor their preference on frequency and method of communication. So uh, my advisor, uh, when I was writing the dissertation, uh, and it was during COVID. So uh, she, um, she actually meet with me um, every Saturday morning uh, on Zoom, when I was writing my uh, chap uh, uh, the chapter four, chapter five, uh, and chapter six. So those are, uh, but she didn't read the entire chapters. And of course I couldn't finish a chapter within a week, but uh, she would read the first two pages of my, uh, those chapters and talk, um, and I would discuss my plan with her uh, in terms of how I'm going to write these chapters. And uh, we met uh, frequently during that, um, I think that's uh, one or one and a half month. Uh, so that was very helpful. And we decided to do that because uh, I asked her preference in terms of uh, uh, the frequency of meeting. So I think it's important to have this open communication with your committee, uh, your advisor, uh, beforehand so that they, you know their expectations. And I think uh, having this uh, routine also helps you to develop a good uh, writing habit, but different advisors will uh, do this very differently. So you have to uh, talk with them uh, beforehand. Uh, and ask your advisor their expectations on the communication. Do they expect some writing before the meeting? Uh, so like I mentioned, my advisor asked me to bring two pages. Uh, so finish your work early so that you can give your advisor time to read your work and provide feedback. So uh, this is a good habit. Don't wait until the meeting. Always share your uh, whatever you prepared beforehand. I think it is it's a good um, habit. Um, and if they don't reply your email, send a gentle reminder. So uh, as a student uh, back then, I, I was afraid of um, reminding my advisors uh, and basically all professors. But uh, sometimes, uh, you know, they, they're busy. They, they might uh, didn't uh, just uh, maybe they didn't see your email. It's just uh, different things happen. It's not because they, they, they don't want to reply. It, it just happens. So don't be afraid to, to send a gentle reminder and seek advice from the rest of the committee, especially on aspects of their expertise and keep them informed of your progress, though less frequently. Uh, but it also depends on their preferences and your chair's preference. 
So I think uh, I did have this question, like how how should a committee uh, like work? Uh, because I don't know if I, uh, uh, how much should I uh, consult the rest of the committee members versus my uh, 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 dissertation chair. So uh, I I asked this question to my dissertation chair and I also um, uh, seek advice from the rest of my committee members. Uh, but definitely those are, uh, those communication are much less frequently than the communication with my uh, dissertation chain. Uh, make sure they're adequately consulted, but do not bother them too much. Uh, for instance, send an entire chapter to them. Uh, so uh, don't do that. Um, but uh, whenever you, you have uh, questions about their style or their preference of working, uh, ask them. Uh, so I think I do have a, a picture here, uh, Dr. Bonk. Uh, my school, yeah. So this is the the school I researched. Um, so uh, actually, it's not the school, but uh, where you you can see the the children are uh, walking. So this is the way uh, to the school, um, and it is a very small school. Um, uh, so it has about uh, one hundred one hundred twenty people, students there, I think. Um, and it's in a, a, a Southwestern China. You also have classroom pictures of it too. I do, oh yeah, here it is. That's the classroom picture. So um, I worked with a, a nonprofit um, in Shanghai. Uh, so I initially I was working in a different school but because I don't want to research my own students uh, because it's harder to get IRB. I, and I know the online teacher uh, well in this school. And I also know the, um, the uh, this, uh, I actually visited them beforehand. So um, I, um, I decided to end up uh, researching uh, this school. And uh, you can see uh, these are the laptops and uh, these are the speakers. I think now they, uh, because it, I did my um, data collection in 2018. So uh, the equipments were kind of uh, old <laughs> that time. They only have two uh, loudspeakers, which is uh, the two that I circled here. So uh, back then the, the communication between the um, students and the online teacher wasn't good uh, because of that. Um, so, yeah, and if you want to speak, you have to press this button and then the, the children has to pass on this to each other uh, if they need to answer a teacher, the online teacher's question. So it takes a lot of um, coordination uh, during the class. Um, you, you also have pictures of the kids in the classroom? Maybe not in this, in not that, in this not slide. In yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So basically that's my um, uh, my suggestions, my, my, my personal experiences, I would say, yeah. Um, and, and you can see my uh, dissertation slides here. So I got um, 20, 25 slides, which is a lot actually. And I see some people, they, they print their, uh, I think Mena did that. Uh, so she printed out her slide into uh, hard copies and uh, uh, give everyone at the defense uh, a copy of that. And sometimes she, she uh, some slides she would talk uh, fast, uh, some slides she would talk more uh, in detail, but I, I only did it online. And for, I think the visuals are very helpful when talking about theoretical framework, which I, I only have three slides, but uh, all uh, visuals. And I don't think committee members want, want long theoretical framework slides. They want, they want you to talk about your research more. So, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, we, have, we can do some theory, but don't spend 15 minutes on the theoretical approach because we've heard that in the proposal meeting. We've right. read that and in also, prospectus. We've read it all the way along. We read it, we're with you. We want the results, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not, not just the results, but you know, you can spend a little bit of time on theory just to reiterate it, but not long, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Balance it. Implications, yeah. limitations, more important. Future directions, more important. Right. So here I have my uh, discussion, uh, which is one slide. Uh, so, but each of these points is a, like a big heading in my discussion chapter, which is chapter seven in my dissertation. And then I reflected on the, the theory and then I come up with a new uh, model. So this is the, what I mentioned by uh, earlier on, I mentioned implications in terms of uh, more uh, theoretical, but also uh, uh, practice or po uh, practical part. So I have, uh, so these two are implications for, on the more theoretical side these two are uh, implications for a uh, more practical side, practice and policy. And the last one is just limitations for and suggestions for future research. And I think uh, those are important uh, things to include as Dr. Bach just mentioned. Questions yeah. for Charan, is this, the, or do you have another section? I think you've done all of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Questions for Charan or comments? Uh, Katie, go ahead. Katie's remote up in Indianapolis. She just, and uh, we can all give her a round of applause. Katie defended her committee question for EDD calls today and passed her committee question. So give her a round of applause on that. She took her other calls yesterday. Um, her day one calls we're going to hear in a couple of weeks. Also, Chen is in the room who just submitted her first author paper study for her dossier too last night at about midnight. Our ten, I read it at midnight last night. So Chen, a round of applause for Chen. Congratulations. And, and we've got Su Min in the room who's new to Bloomington. She's working with her advisor, Dr. Chul Lim. Dr. Lim is a former IST student and uh, Seoul National University. So she's here from Korea as a visiting scholar with Dr. Kwan. And this is her first day in this class. So is it Su Min or, or how do you say your first name? Su Min. So give her a round of applause too. So we've got three people with accomplishments. Anyone else have accomplishments before Katie asks her question? Um, so a lot going on this week because the EDD calls is a big deal. Um, part of this class is to get people ready for EDD calls. They were all taking the practice calls on Monday and Tuesday. I was reading them <laughs> Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, all the practice calls. So the, the real calls was yesterday. And then today was the, the day two part, the, the, the committee question part of it. Um, and, and, and Katie's looking at AI in K-12 education. So Katie, what's your question? Thank you for being here. I'm curious if there's a specific area of your dissertation defense that you wish you would have prepared more, um, and maybe you included it in your presentation already, um, or an area that you felt like you thought you would have a lot of you know, questions about or focus on that then you, in reality, did not. Oh, that's a really great question. Um, uh, I think... Uh, um methodology yes that that really gives me a, a deep impression that's why i i high about that um that text methods uh because i feel like my committee members two of them asked uh, many questions about methods but the first question i got from the uh, the committee members is uh, really surprised me and i didn't prepare well because when one person asked do you decide to work in China or in the US in the future? <laughs> I didn't know why this question came out. So I, I don't think I addressed that well. Maybe I think the committee member just wanted to, to start with easier and be friendly. That's why he asked that question. But I, I kind of answered that uh, too seriously, I think. <laughs> and uh, 
uh, yeah, but in terms of methods, I, I remember um, one committee member asked me, yeah, as I mentioned, why did I only uh, just use um, a, sh a short period of time, uh, the observation data. Uh, but I do mention that I have a lot of online observation already before I go to the school. Because uh, I, uh, for ethnographic study, they definitely expect me to have more um, observation data and participant uh, kind of field, field work. Uh, so uh, whatever methodology you, you choose, you, um, I think, uh, be prepared. And I think the other challenge I had, I think Dr. Bonk, maybe you can uh, help me with this. <laughs> I'm kind of throwing a question there. So uh, one of my committee members, uh, I think she didn't remember. She she got uh, one of, um, she, she I, I feel like she probably misunderstood a part of uh, what I wrote. And when she asked that question, I kind of surprised, but I, I as a student at that time, I feel I wasn't in a good position to make uh, like question or maybe even say that um, you misunderstood me or you didn't, you probably didn't read that part uh, so that you, 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 you kind of um, mis yeah, misunderstood. But I don't know if for a candidate if they run, run into that question during a defense, maybe because one of the members uh, maybe they didn't uh, read that part uh, or clearly so how should we address that or mention even mention that do we just say um for instance i already mentioned that in certain chapters or certain pages because because i that that that's oh. that's a question that has to do with ethical concern as well because uh because i i studied uh the question was actually about positionality because I was a Han Chinese, I was uh, the dominant uh, ethnic group in, in China and my participants were ethnic minorities. And one of the ethnic minority teachers uh, made some comments about the children, which um, uh, which I, I think um, maybe the committee member has some, um, wasn't happy with that comment. <laughs> But uh, she, but she didn't realize my participant is also part of the community. But she thought uh, it's my wrong re representation of them. But it was indeed a quote from the participant. Uh, so she, she think I misrepresented uh, the com community, and also because I was a Han Chinese, so I wasn't very sensitive of it. But because uh, I think she didn't read that paragraph maybe clearly, so she got my, uh, she, uh, anyway, so yeah. long story to be short, short, I don't know how to address that well, and also so, because of the power relation there, yeah. yeah. So questions can come up that you've really addressed in your dissertation, but people just wanna ask them anyways. There are some mm -hmm. committee members that ask the same questions at every dissertation defense, just so they can ask their question. So what you can do is say, talk to your advisor and say, what kinds of questions does this, what kind of questions Dr. Kwan typically asks? What kind of questions Dr. Brush? Did? And they'll tell you. I can tell you what, pretty much what types of questions they'll, they'll tend to bring up or in generalities, anyhow. Um, and that will help prepare you for those scary moments that you didn't expect the question to happen. And, you know, I know who she's talking about right now. I won't say her or his name um, to protect the person, but, um, <laughs> you know, um, she or he um, tends to ask certain kinds of questions that puts people on the spot and just kind of thinks in her head ran or his head randomly about theory and um, and just spouts them out and wants to have a conversation about certain theoretical things that, that just enter her mind or his mind. And um, and that's that's just that just happens all the time. Uh, and so if you know that that's coming, then you can take it, you know, be up there and be a little braver maybe a little more courage if you know these things are coming and you prepare yourself for them um and usually if you don't freeze up you're fine <laughs> <laughs> some students freeze literally freeze so practice practice your presentation practice in front of people practice by yourself practice with your computer closed Practice your computer five, 10 feet away from you in front so you can't read every word. You have to kind of interpret 
and that will help you build a conversation about your dissertation. And, um, and don't read the notes directly from, you know, um, you know, from that you've prepared. Um, you know, you can read them the first couple of times that you practice, but after a while, read from them keywords, maybe bullet point keywords in red. I find uh, certain colors that come out and then you think, oh yeah, that word I have to emphasize in my answer or in my presentation about theory or findings or whatever. Um, but, you know, make it be a little conversational, a little bit. It's, it's, it's formal, but yet it's casual. It's, um, it's an um, accumulation of work of over a year, some people a year's worth of work getting a dissertation. So you know that field, you know that topic, you know uh, what you're not covering in your dissertation. And again, if you, if you talk to your committee members, talk to your advisor about your dissertation, they understand what's coming and you'll feel more comfortable not coming in cold because you've mentioned it to one of your committee members. This is what I found. This is what I'm sorry, Tron. Does this make sense? Did, did I go too far there? Or... Oh, those are really great uh, suggestions. And thank you for protecting her or him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I really agree. I, I should be braver. Uh, and But I didn't breathe. So that was good. <laughs> but I feel like you my- You didn't breathe? Uh, I didn't breathe. Freeze. <laughs> freeze out here. Yeah. Oh, freeze. You didn't freeze. You, yeah. But you did breathe. Okay. I did. I did. Yeah. So, yeah. Another thing, if you felt nervous, I think um, deep breath or circle your neck uh, and uh, having more oxygen or and make your muscles relax. I think that, that was helpful. Uh, and uh, what, what was the other thing? Yeah. And sometimes uh, your uh, as I mentioned, don't take those things personally. Dr. Bonk also mentioned uh, if you go to cert certain defenses, you will find uh, that person. Uh, it's just their style of asking questions. So uh, if you observe that, then you won't take it, take that uh, personally. So, and you won't be afraid. So yeah, those are really great suggestions. Any final question for Charan? And Merve has joined us and she's asked an email if we've resolved the tech issue. Yes and no. Um, no, we haven't resolved it fully, but yet this worked well enough, I think, the first hour. We could continue this format, but what we're going to try and do, we may take a five-minute break and try uh, the tech person. I found a tech person and she's going to come in the room, but she doesn't know the secret things that the other guys knew how to do it. So I'm going to guess that we won't fix it fully. We're going to go back and use the same way that you're on. Um, we just have everyone's computers on and we're muting our microphone except for Jill, who's got her audio on. So we hear Jill's audio and everyone else has their audio muted. We're in um, 2277, which is the old dissertation defense room. Um, Charon, when you defended, you're in COVID time. So right. you defended remotely? Yeah. Fully and, online. And Merve, you defended. Yes, I defended based, there. In this in room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And I think Jack Cummings came remotely, but everyone else, a couple people were in the room. One or two people were remote. Is that right? Right. It was on hybrid defense. Yeah. So, but it worked. Every you know we muddled through just like today. You are, by the way, missing chocolates and um, <laughs> you know from remote, and these are really good. Um, oh, wow. These were sent from Korea, actually, um, from one of my former students. She got one of my calendars and that I, I sent to Korea, and she, in return, sent these um, to me. Um, and she's actually one who didn't finish her dissertation. So uh, I won't say her name, but she, her parents came for the defense, flew all the way to India. She went through defense and um, never did her dissertation. Um, but she's got a job in Korea at a university and doing well and quite well. And um, she's she's great. Uh, so anyways, I'm getting chocolates from Korea. I've got new people showing up from Korea here today. Su Min just uh, showed up, on the, uh, came off the plane and jumped into this class. So thanks, Su Min, for joining us. Katie just defended her quals, EDD quals. And Chen has submitted her dossier too, Merve. Um, Chen last night submitted her first author paper. So we got a lot of people making progress in here. We all clap for them before you arrived. Um, we'll clap again for everyone. And let's clap Yay. for Tehran. 
Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you. And you're welcome to stay for a little bit, but of course, it's going to take us a while to set up, so it might be fruitless for you to stay, but um, we do appreciate you um, coming up for week 11, part one, R795, spring of 2024, all the way from Maine, <laughs> from Waterville, Maine. Um, <laughs> so the key is keeping the main thing the main thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, a very rural place, and uh, we had a storm a few days ago. <laughs> so uh, one, before you go, can you tell people a little bit about where you work, about Waterville, Maine, and Colby College, and how you found your job, um, and what um, it's like to do a job search and all that? Because you were successful. You had something in Miami and something in Maine. You went to the M to the north, not the M to the south. But... Um, Thank you. Uh, that's a related question in terms of this decision defense too. So when I was on the job market, I did a lot of mock kind of uh, interview thing. So um, I remember when I was doing my my uh, job talk for the Miami, uh, and I so I had a WeChat group where like a lot of PhD students in China all share the same group. So I sent an invite. I said I had a job. I have have a job interview. I would like you to participate. <laughs> and then I did it on Zoom and a lot of people came and they gave me a lot of um, advice. That was really helpful. So uh, I feel like doing a mock interview or a mock defense uh, really helped you to reflect on your work and think about it from an audience perspective. And they give you a lot of uh, suggestions. So uh, in terms of how I get this job, um, uh, so I I think I saw this uh, advertisement on. Uh, the, the job ad on uh, apply linguistics. Um, so we have uh, like a professional uh, uh, a conference uh, in the in, in apply linguistics, and I saw it. And I don't know what is a liberal arts school before I apply, but I I got invited to the interview, and then I can I start to understand um, this uh, liberal arts education and. Uh, uh, I think about uh, how, I think one challenge for me was that uh, I'm in school of education, but this is a position hosted in the writing department uh, and it is a liberal arts school. So I don't have a much background, but um, I kind of uh, try to um, market myself as an interdisciplinary person, <laughs> um, talk about how my uh, experience in anthropology and in English and in because I worked uh, before I, so uh, my last year at IU, I finally got a job teaching position in my own department. But before that, I taught in English department and in, in anthropology and in criminal justice department. So I tried to weave all that into a story to say that I am an interdisciplinary person and I, I uh, which kind of uh, relates to uh, a writing department uh, that cares much about um, interdisciplinary writing in a liberal arts education. So I think even though some job ads, you, when you see it, you initially you think, oh, I might not be the right person, but um, you, you, you will try to want to make yourself, you think about how my experiences all come together and you can uh, narrate your story in a way that uh, similar to um, you know, the, the identity of uh, the institution of that position. So I think it all comes into how you um, That's great. You frame your narrative. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Chiron, for coming this week. I do have a tech person who knows what he's doing or what we're going <laughs> or, 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 or to do. So we have someone who's going to help us. Let's take a 10 minute break or five, five, well, take a seven minute break. And by that time, we might have this all set up. I'm going to stop the recording again. Thank Chiron for coming in here for week 11, R795.